All right, make sure you have the part saved with this complete. Um, and then we're going to focus now on the rectangle or the box shape. Uh, again, uh, right now we are looking at options, a lot of different ways that we could approach this. It's all neutral geometry. Uh, you know, none of these lines help to define any other lines. So uh, freeform is probably not the best method for this, but that's going to be the first method that we do. And we're going to spend a, a couple of minutes looking at that. So jumping back over to Gibbs, I'm going to start just by creating the four lines. I'm going to go to line, and we'll come over to axis line. Axis lines are either vertical or horizontal, nowhere in between. You simply select the vertical or the horizontal icon. And if you're on vertical, this is an X value. If you're on horizontal, this is a Y value. The bottom value here is Z, so it stays at zero. So entering my vertical lines, I want to enter a line at one inch, shift enter, because I need to enter more lines, and two, enter, switch to horizontal lines, minus one, minus three. Those are the four lines that make this up. Now, there are basically three ways of connecting this together. Uh, I want to show you the what I call the old school Gibbs cam way of connecting, um, which is good to know what's happening under the surface, but there are faster ways to connect this up. Uh, but that is to select two pieces of geometry. So I'm clicking here, I'm holding down control and clicking here, and then click the connect button. And that's gonna connect these two into the same shape. Now, before I start, let me start out looking back at this piece of geometry, this shape. Notice that it's all blue, and if I double click on any portion of it, it selects the entire shape. That lets me know that that's all one shape. And each of the pieces of geometry are connected with one of these blue squares, which is called a connector. It means there's two pieces of geometry that are joined together at that location. So if I click here, hold down the control key and click here, well, hang on a second, let me back up. With nothing selected, if I double click on this line, nothing but that line selects. You know, even though these lines all intersect, they're not part of a shape. So if I select this line, hold down the control key and select that line and click the connect button, I get a little blue square or a connector at the intersection of those. Now if I double click on this line, it highlights this line and this line as well as that point or that connector. Uh, this is all part of one shape now. If I go to this line, select it, hold down the control key and select this line and connect those, then this line trims. It's been fully defined. And if I double click on this line now, all three of these lines highlight or select and both points as well. So then if I continue walking around this, I select that line, hold down the control key and select that line and connect. This line trims. And now all four lines are part of the same shape. And I to finish this off, I just need to select the last line and then this first line and connect those. And that gives me my shape. Then I can select the corner, the connector on the corner, and that allows me to go into my chamfer button. I can select a fillet radius, half inch radius, and apply that to finish that shape out. All right, so that's kind of the old school Gibbs cam method of connecting. I'll show you the what I consider the newer method, but not the newest method, but the newer method of connecting. Um, and that's to use the shift key, which allows me to drag a box and anything inside that box gets selected, which is a much faster way of selecting those two lines than click and control click. I just hold down the shift and drag a box around it. And then rather than taking my mouse back and forth to the connect button, I can just right click on the selected geometry and connect right there. And just walk around the part, connecting. So that's a faster way of connecting. And then additionally, I could shift drag a box around there. The lines don't matter. The only thing that matters is the connector is selected and put in my fillet radius. Now, probably the fastest way to make a complete shape out of this unconnected geometry uh, is under plugins and contour trace. Contour trace allows me to just select the geometry in order. So select start point, line, or circle. So you can use this to create a uh, shape out of completely unconnected geometry or to add 
uh, new geometry to an existing shape very easily and quickly. So I just click on the geometry and when I click on the last piece of geometry I should see the shape that I'm going for in red and then I say create. Now this is not actually connecting this yellow geometry. It's creating an entirely new shape based on what I selected. So I have the option of either deleting or not deleting the construction geometry. In this case I want to delete it and then come in and put my fillet radius in there. All right, so that's three different ways to deal with the unconnected geometry. Uh, let's look at a couple of other options. Uh, geometry Expert would look like this. I might start out with a vertical line at X1, horizontal line at Y minus 1, vertical line at X2, horizontal line at Y minus 3, and then close the shape out. I could also do the fillet radius inside of Geometry Expert, although I would normally do it after the fact because it's quick and easy to do after the fact. Another option here would be under my shapes, I can create a box that measures one inch in the X axis and two inches in the Y axis. I have nine choices for what position on that box or that rectangle I want to dimension to. Uh, I can dimension to any of the four corners, any of the four midpoints, or the center of the rectangle. I'm going to dimension to the upper left corner, and that upper left corner is going to be at X1, Y minus 1. Select that corner, and do my fillet radius. Lastly, I can simply draw lines with my mouse. Now, notice that I have a grid value here, and if I move my cursor out on the screen, I'll see that my X and Y positions are changing by hundred thousandths increments. If I change this to four inches and zoom way out, then my X and Y values will change by four inch increments. If I make that one ten thousandths, they change by one ten thousandths increments. Uh, so really what you want to do is set this to the largest number that will let you hit the corners that you want to hit. So if we look at our drawing, we've got you know x1, y minus 1, uh, x2, y minus 1, x2, y minus 3, x1, y minus 3. They're all one inch increments. All four corners are even one inch increments. So if I set this grid to one inch, all I've got to do is get close. You can see how far away that endpoint is from where my mouse is. That's exactly at X1, Y minus 1. And then every time that line jumps, it's 1 inch. So I can come over 1, down 2, back over 1, and back up to where I started. And it closes the shape out. And drop in my fillet radius. So there are several different ways that we could approach that. So go ahead and uh, go through two or three of those methods uh, definitely do freeform, practice the connecting. Uh, definitely do Geometry Expert to reinforce that. Uh, and then uh, pick one of the other methods, or, or if you have time, two of the other methods to try. Uh, on the freeform, use whichever method of connecting you want to, but I would recommend getting accustomed to using the Contour Trace plugin. Uh, it's a very quick, easy way to uh, do a couple of things, to create a shape from totally unconnected geometry, as well as to add new geometry to an existing shape.